Welcome to a standalone issue review. This one will be pretty much reviewing uh, the first appearance of the Jessica Drew Spider-Woman. Now this video simply will be a prelude to uh, my friend Edgar's reviews on the Spider-Woman comic book. So I figured though, I did ask him if he was going to do this, he wasn't necessarily going to do this, but I decided though, why not do this so he doesn't have to do it because he's got a lot on his plate, so I get this out of the way. First appearance of Spider-Woman. Uh, just could use my own from Marvel Spotlight number 32. This is actually one issue after the first appearance of the Infinity Formula. The thing that keeps Nick Fury looking like this and why he looks like this up until Original Sin. The comic opens up with Spider Woman just flying around. I should point out who is the creative team of this issue. Archie Goodwin, who's the writer and editor of the book. So, Archie Goodwin is not only the creator of Luke Cage, but also of Jessica Drew. The artwork in here is done by Sal Bushma and Joe Mooney. And the letterer is Ive Wannabe, and the colorist is Janice Cohen. Okay, now, simply put, Spider Woman is here um, to attack this post. And you, you can see display of powers. Basically, she crawls in the wall, like Spider-Man, and she pulls off a grate, throws in the water, does some climbing, and basically she's infiltrating a shield complex. Now, at this point, in, you know, it just in this story only, though she does kind of go back and forth between these two, she is working for Hydra. Yes. Which, this is their costumes at this point. Now, Nick Fury... Now he's the central. He's one of two focus characters in this issue. He's the other focus character. I guess they probably figured though, why not have him sort of introduce the new Spider Woman, the new the new character. So, simply put, they pretty much want to. Hydra's plan is to simply kill Nick Fury. That's simply their plan, and basically Jessica Drew's job is to kill him. And apparently. Uh, apparently he's been taken captive and by these bogus shield agents who are basically posing, uh, basically Hydra posing as shield agents. And they're basically beating the crap out of him because they want info on shield. So simply put, he basically beats up uh, the Hydra guard and Spider-Man gets in, takes out um, these uh, shield goons. At this point she's known as... Uh, Arcane, not Spider Woman yet, but technically she. This is the first appearance of her. Busts through a door. When Nick Fury is still beating up some people, blasts a couple Shield agents, and it's like, huh. something about. And then she she wants to kill Nick Fury for apparently killing the man that he she loved. Okay. And then simply put, we get a flashback to Orchester, where apparently. Um, People are trying to stone this mysterious woman with for her strange powers. And there's this older guy who says, Stay your hand, child. I have heard of you and your novel abilities. I've come here to help. This is him. Now, he, he simply put, uh, he takes her to Hydra, which this guy is supposed to be the supreme, uh, probably one of, one of the Hydras, probably a low-ranking leader, per se. It's not Strucker, so who knows who could it be? And so they kind of, in a way, brainwash her in a way. That's what it looks like. They give her special training, and they give her her costume, which she later ditches. Uh, in case you're wondering, why is her hair, like, completely hidden in this first appearance? Uh, simply put, this is how the costume was. Later on, she did pull the part of the mask out to allow her hair to be pulled apart, and... Also, at this point, her hair, her hair at this point, she was simply uh, a blonde, which she later dyed her hair to be uh, black, like like she's no one depicted to be. Yeah, so you have Nick Fury and Spider-Woman battling each other in this wonderful page done by uh, Sal Bushma. His 90 work is really terrible. So... So, this guy's thinking, uh, Nick Fury's thinking, oh, Blaze, the Spider-Man should sue this dame for a violation of superpowers. At least, 
I know I reach where I wanted to go. The interrogation chamber control console play pay, playback on the subject. And the guy who she knocked out basically makes it kill him, kill him now. He says yes now. And and Nick Fury throws him and of course they decide to uh, she hits her I don't know, her guy she's in love with. And she tries to kill Nick Fury and all of a sudden she decides to hesitate and then presumably put uh, and apparently Jared, uh, who is apparently her boyfriend, apparently has been lying to her the whole time. Basically, they manipulate her and simply put the guy, basically, he admits everything. And they decide to simply just leave. Hydra failed. Run away. So, simply put, basically, Nick Fury and Spider-Woman assault the Hydra complex that she was taken to, at least brought to. And she simply, she just goes and kills a bunch of Hydra agents. Yeah, she goes on a killing spree. Kill, kill, kill. Even Nick Fury joins in the parade. Yeah, let's kill ourselves some Hydra agents. Yep, kill, kill, kill. He says, we'll, we'll let them our flyer. Regard. This, this is the shield agent saying, this is the head guy saying this. We'll let them follow our flyer. Very well bargained in. You may force what you want from me, Arcade. Or I must, might resist and die with your secret. But if I were allowed to flee and avoid by sheer capture, voice by, capture by shield. And of course, okay, fine. I guess she decided, okay, let's just take the flyer out. It won't be cheated and simply put some exploding energy and apparently she goes back to normal. Uh, basically, there's a flashback to the high evolutionary. And it says right here, according to Archie Goodwin, this is before his debut in Mighty Thor number 134 back in the 60s. This is the High Evolutionary. Normally he's seen a guy, basic, he's normally depicted, not like how he is in the Spider-Man Limited cartoon, where he's just a regular guy with a old guy with a beard. Uh, traditionally he's depicted as this guy wearing this purple suit. This is how he traditionally looks, and this is how he looks this very day. He basically is the ruler of Counter-Earth. His most recent appearance was actually in Kenny Avengers. Uh, volume 2, second volume of the premier's run. It says different species. Um, so, yeah, this is actually her first origin story. This origin story technically was still remain canon up until Brian Michael Bendis retconned it with the Spider-Woman origin story that happened uh, that came out in 2006, I believe it was. I think it was 2005, yeah. It was not long after she joined the New Avengers that simply they retconned her origin story. And simply put, apparently she was a part, uh, she was created by, according to this, uh, apparently she was created by the High Evolutionary. She was, says, basically High Evolutionary created her, and she simply just ran away. Met some guy, and apparently accidentally attacked. So apparently he's the this this uh, Hydra leader apparently is behind everything that has happened in her origin story, and he pretty much tries to get away. So Spider Woman just grabs onto his flyer. She he tries to kill her with by shooting him instead so shooting her instead of you know turning the plane sideways or better yet turn the plane upside down. Yeah, instead of using controls on his plane, he refers to just shoot her, and so she just. Bends his the tail thing away, and the guy crashes into a mountain. It's like, okay, let's finish. Let's finish it up. No sign of that spider name. And she just goes around and just, and she just walks away, flies down, walks away, and that simply ends the issue. Uh, this uh, from basically rereading it again. Uh, I have read this issue before. Okay, so I'm yes, I have read it before, so even though I kind of basically sort of kind of screwed up and just not have these things up uh, for a certain period of time. But simply put, this is actually a pretty decent first appearance for Spider-Woman. Um, and it's really neat the fact that uh, Nick Fury basically played in the hand of the first appearance. And pretty much right after this, she got her own series. That last 50 issues. Which is by far one of the two longest running female titles published by Marvel Comics. 
The other course is Essential She-Hulk. Because apparently Marvel has a curse, basically put a curse on the female solo titles, with the exception of two, apparently female solo titles cannot last more than basically a year or two. Spider-Woman, Miss Marvel, and Sensational She-Hulk basically beat that. Miss Marvel Volume 2 lasted for 50 issues. Also, Sensational She-Hulk lasted for 60 issues, and the She-Hulk series, oh well, Volumes 1 and 2 lasted combined 50 issues. When the third volume ended, it basically brought up to 62. But simply put, it's a great first appearance for Spider-Woman. And later on, she will abandon the back of her mask and basically have her hair pulled out like this. Now, her powers are simply, she cannot simply just fly. It's later explained that um, she basically can glide for a certain period of time that she can just fly down. Um, she has similar powers to Spider-Man. Um... But there's some unique differences. For one thing, Spider-Man does not shoot energy beams out of his hands. Actually, I think that I think she's probably the only person who's part of the Spider-Man family who actually can do that. Actually, he's one of two. The other course is Miles Morales. He can kind of do that too. Um, I don't think they give an actual name here, but I think the, it, it's basically kind of like the Venom Blast that uh, Miles Morales uses uh, as part of his spider powers. I mean, yeah, I pretty much put in. Reviewed it from the trade of Spider-Man Volume 1, which collected the previous volume of the series. But, in case you're wondering, uh, how many costumes has Jessica Drew basically gone through over the years? Currently, she's on her second one, because she stuck this costume for many years, until the end of her series, where she mysteriously lost her powers, and she remained powerless for the next, like, 30 years or so, until new Brian Michael Bendis basically gave her powers back. But simply put, great first issue, action-packed. Um, so I think I'm, sorry, I'm sort of exaggerating it a bit, but it is really an interesting issue to read, and I highly recommend it if you can find it. Um, overall, I give the issue a 9.5 out of 10. It's a great first appearance. It's a great first appearance, action-packed, great artwork, great writing by Archie, by the late Archie Goodwin. I say late because the guy passed away 20 years ago. But simply put, the guy knows how to create characters. I mean, yeah, he created this character back in the 70s, which is what, which is that period of time, which is the period of basically keep, keep creating brands, making new characters. And this character is still around to this very day, and she's a mother. And currently, it's in the sixth volume right now. Now, the other, the two other volumes that simply this book is published. Hopefully, all this is published six volumes. Excuse me. Four of the six volumes focus on Jessica Drew. The second volume focuses on Julia Carpenter, who is not currently Spider-Woman. She is one of the two people who hold the name of Madam Web, and her most recent appearance was actually in Prowler number two. The third Spider-Woman, who was recently resurrected thanks to clone conspiracy, was Maddie Franklin. She became Spider-Woman uh, during the uh, Spider-Man Rebirth era, basically late uh, 1999 to 2000 era. During the Howard Mackey run, so basically that's when she became Spider Woman, and got her own spinoff series, which lasted 18 issues, uh, and she recently came back. Um, simply put, Jessica Drew is a great Spider Woman. Currently, now they've never confirmed exactly how old she is. Um, from the look of her, she looks like she's in her early 30s. That's my personal guess. I don't know, but overall, great issue. How can we track it down? So Edgar, I took care of the first parents. Go ahead, start the start the Spider Woman series whenever you're ready. So that's it for this video. Next, Comic Corner, classics slash non-classics. Okay. So until then, I will see you there. Bye.